हेलो 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 Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. How are you? Thank you, uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in trouble mm -hmm. with the link uh, to join the meeting. I don't know why I can get access with the link only with the ID of the meeting and the and the code. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to report that one. I don't know what's going on. Sometimes that happens because of Zoom. Sometimes it requires a code. There are things that are happening, but I'm going to report that one to check what we can do. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, thank you, teacher.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. How are you today? So we're gonna check, well, first of all, as usual, we're gonna check the platform. So this is the class we are recording right now. And there below, you will see the question for today. Also remember that tonight, we need to do the homework 1.7. So it's just a matter for you to click what will be the best option and then submit. I hope everybody is up to date with the platform so we don't have any problems whenever we finish. Good, so now of course, what we're gonna do is to check the attendance, which is very important. So, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher, good night. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good evening. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Very good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Here, teacher, present. Good. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibeth Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Uh, okay, Fernando. Let me just check here. Okay, so we're gonna start the class of today. So, Danny, very good. I'm gonna check on Jud as well. Good. So let me just go here. Okay. Okay, so the topic of today is explaining the benefit of different training options. So of course, the first thing that we're going to check are different kinds of trainings that we can get or we can provide, deliver to other people. So uh, we're gonna start practicing by reading and uh, the first paragraph is going to be for Yvonne. Could you please help us? Okay. Employee training is a significant part of an organization's growth and success. A well-trained workforce is more productive and efficient at their roles, enabling them to contribute at high level to their organization. With the importance of effective employee training being obvious, the next step is to choose the right employee training methods that are ideal for your overall organization, as well as individual team members. Different types of employee training methods come with different benefits, challenges, and goals. Good, what did you understand on the first paragraph? Um, okay, um, you need to identify the needs that different employees have in the in the 
in the positions uh, for the job. And you have to give them uh, the appropriate trainings uh, to improve uh, their areas and the knowledge and give them tools to improve uh, the development of everyone. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is it. I mean, there are many ways of trainings and depending on the need and depending on what you want to achieve, you have to choose the right one. I know that sometimes the most common is a person that is going to come, an expert that is going to come and deliver an either training or a workshop, which are, I guess, the most common, but there are many ways of training, so methods and many benefits that we can bring to those. Good. So question for everybody for some vocabulary. What is well-trained workforce? Uh, a workforce that has received a, a, a good training. Very good. According to the needs. Exactly. According to their role in the company, you have received a well-trained. I mean, you are very well skilled. Of course, there are always chances of improvement. What is enabling? Something activating. Oh. I'm sorry? Activate. To activate something, yeah. Maybe something like that. Somebody else was saying something different. Okay, yeah, enable is, yes, like when you uh, are able to set up something so you will be able to, to do things. Uh, enable is the opposite of disable. Okay, that is another way to say it. It's the opposite of disable. Okay, what is something that is obvious? Oops. Evident. Evident. Something that you know for sure that is, is like that, right? And uh, that is it. Okay. Uh, the next part, everything that is there is going to be for Juan Miguel. Okay, teacher. <clears throat> there are different learning styles for different people. Some are some are visual visual learners, some need a hands-on experience, some require an instructor to guide them. It is easy to find an employee training method that works best for your workplace, L and D. Yes, L&D teams need to understand their employees' learning style and consider and consider other affecting factors such as such as their training objectives, goals, cost, and timeline. Identifying the best training method for your employees requires a lot of detailed thought and planning, which can be a bit overwhelming for the L&D teams, especially as the cost of employee training is so high. To give you a head start, this article will give you a list of different uh, employee training methods to understand and choose the and choose from. Good. What did you understand on this one? Um, first of all, uh, like the like the reading says, uh, everyone of uh, everyone, uh, even in this uh, module. Uh, we can different or several methods of uh, learning, okay, or, or not learning, but um, um, the method when you are studying or learning something, uh, in my case is doing things, okay, not, not much reading, not much, uh, Obviously watching videos, but doing at the same time. So other people is most mostly reading and other people uh, <clears throat> mostly uh, uh, they can uh, 
both things, reading and doing things, uh, but um, the important thing is to find the, the best way or the best method to do uh, or to, <clears throat> to train uh, your people in your organization and uh, go through their top, top up skills in <clears throat> But you uh, you have to identify the best the best way, okay? Not not maybe not the same the same uh, style for everything, but also uh, you have you have to find the best way in in each of of them, okay? Very good, perfect. That is actually what it says. So actually, the two things are very important. Yeah, we. Everybody were different, right? So we learn in different ways. So yeah, uh, Juan Miguel already explained the way he, he, he learns better. For me, if I, I am a person that I write everything. I write yes, every yes. single thing. And by doing as well, I really like that one. So you understand. Another very good way for me to, to learn is by teaching. When you're teaching sometimes, I mean, you need to understand and you also learn from other people. So that is very, very good. So that is the first question that I have for everybody. What is the best way for you to learn? What do you believe is it? I want to know. Teacher, I think the best way to learn is by doing, doing or practicing. Okay, very good, practicing, so. Yeah, actually, that is one of the best methods. That's definitely. Any other person? Maybe you learn in a different way. The way I learn is uh, writing down and then reading and then repeating, repeating, repeating. Actually, repeating is another very good way. I mean, if you repeat something and maybe the first time you didn't get it, but the third time, the fifth time, depending on the complexity of the process that you're learning, then you need to repeat many, many times or just two or three times. But that is another good way for learning. Good. Any other opinion? Any other? Um, Go ahead. I'm one of the visual learners. Um, sometimes that happened to me and also my, my new boss told me that because I only saw how to create uh, something and then I built the same with Very a mistake. So uh, I'm, well, I'm cataloging, I guess that we can, we can use that word. Yep. Okay. I guess that I'm cataloging like visual learner. Very good. So it's very good. Uh, visual is something that, I mean, I, I'm kind of visual. I like to see and I like to write everything. And then you will are able to analyze and check what you can do. And it's a very good way for learning as well, because then you understand by watching other people doing it and then repeating yourself. Any other person wants to share? Um, okay, uh, go ahead. I agree. Um, I'm agree with with all the ways that um, the teammate or classmate um, has um, told told us. Um, I read. Um, I'm I'm not so much to writing to writing down the things, um, but I like to watch uh, many examples, many examples as I can. I search a lot on the internet and in books um, and when I see examples um, I I try to to do it by myself and then um, I apply all the I just learn and <laughs> just that <laughs> okay I'm going um, and then um, I review <laughs> the things I just did and try to improve. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Danny. Any other opinion or comment? Yeah, well, in my case, uh, I'm agree with the rest, but I think that 
well, in my case, um, I try to looking for an interesting topic for me because when you um, have an interest in some uh, specific, um, I don't know, a topic or book or, or uh, movies, you try to understand more, more than when you are uh, learn with a boring uh, topic. So I, I think that is important when you um, have the knowledge about what do you want, what do you uh, prefer, and looking for information about that and try to improve. Very good. Mathematics is totally different, but in English we we have to looking for a, a specific interesting topic for us, for example. Okay. Yeah, actually that is true. I mean, depending of course on what you're learning, what you say is something very important. I mean, for example, in English, you can, if you like music, you can practice by listening to music. If you mm -hmm. like movies, you can watch movies, you can read. And uh, well, in the English for, for work that we provide here, sometimes it's a little bit complicated because we need to follow some topics, right? Mm -hmm. But that's why yeah. I, was, I was telling you in the very first class that sometimes we stop this and we speak three we will speak about whatever so that is important because you will be able to share about things that you really like mm -hmm. yeah and definitely when you're entertaining of course you're happy there right so it's not that you're forced to learn perfect any other person so here comes another situation right so Imagine that you are going to deliver a training and you know that everybody learns in different ways. So now it's a little bit difficult to design or to decide which method you will apply. Maybe you can combine two, three, right? Or do dynamics or do games. I don't know. For them to, to actually get to, to the competency that you want them to, to know. So it's, it's difficult, it's difficult because, I mean, not everybody's happy with all the activities or the way of training, right? So it's kind of complicated. And the other thing that is important here in this paragraph is, is what it says, that we need to consider every factor like uh, objectives, goals, costs. I mean, sometimes they are very good training, but maybe they are very expensive, right? So. And timeline, how soon would you like to, to learn or to deliver the training? Okay, so that is important. Let's check some vocabulary. Let's see. What is L and D? I don't know, teacher. Okay. I read this, I, I read this but I, I didn't know what, what that means. Okay, not a problem. Of course, that's why we're here. So L&D is like a, a department that some companies have and in the name of that one is learning and development. Okay. So it's like the training department, but nowadays they, the name is not training anymore. It's like learning and development. Okay, and let's see what else. Um, I don't think, oh, well, overwhelming. What is that? Do you remember? Yes. It's when I think, um, it's so huge that you can, that you have, or not, that you are uh, impressed by, by this thing, maybe. Like, uh, okay. it's, it's main information for me, so I'm over overwhelming about this topic, for example. Okay, very good. Yeah, it's like an adjective, right? So when you are like stunning with your open mouth and thinking, oh my goodness, what is this? So a situation that causes you that impact that you don't know how to act, what to think, things like that. Very good. I don't think we have any other here. So these are like the best, right, learning. So the first one is e-learning. 
the first person is going to read the first paragraph and the and the pros. So this is going to be for Roxana, my cousin. Sorry, teacher. I I, I didn't hear. Estaba trabajando, verdad? Ah, could okay, you repeat, but, please? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, could you please read uh, this first part and the pros? The first of one. The learning? Yeah. Okay. The learning online training has become one of most recognized recognizing employees training medals especially in the post-pandemic world, world where employees are remote and can't attend in-person training session. E-learning enables employees to learn in the comfort, comfort of, of their homes according to their individual learning style and needles. Pros, online courses can combine interactive games Quizzes, activities, and gamifications to gamification. keep employees gamification to keep employees engaged and improve knowledge retention. It gives employees the freedom to learn on the to learn on the go with a smartphone. Some components of e-learning can be automated, automated lowering, 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 lowering overhead and decreasing the instructor's need to involve in the training constant, constantly. E-learning is scalable. 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 Thank you. E-learning does not require a physical class classroom. We translate to reduce monetary spending. Employees can easily manage work with learning by taking by, by taking the online courses at their preferred time. Learning management system provides enough data to efficiently calculate the return of on training investment allowing L and D teams to measure the su success to different training programs. Very good. What did you understand in your own words about e-learning? Well, uh, e-learning is um, the new style in or uh, nowadays. That's correct, say that? Yeah, nowadays, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, because uh, about the pandemic, we need to uh, organize all the activities and we identify what, what activities can, can do in physical or not. So e-learning is a good option for people that uh, they need uh, to more time to for, for work, sorry, for work, for family or something like that. And don't have um, a lot of time to spend in the traffic, for example. And you need, you can uh, take courses online uh, about different topics or courses by yourself, looking for information uh, and try to improve. Okay, very good. Actually, that is it. I mean, it's the most common right now, I guess. The most common. Yeah. In of course, pandemic helped us uh, doing this one, impose that one, because in the past it was kind of difficult. There were people that were delivering this kind of trainings, but now it's, it's the most common, definitely. The thing is that uh, now uh, it's complex because uh, I think people are uh, too comfortable in their house working or learning and they don't want to um, return to the physical activities, but some companies, for example, uh, is now is mandatory to to do that, and it's complex because uh, you know it's comfortable work or learning at home. Actually, that is very true. It's much more comfortable. I mean, I work from home and I'm very happy. And the oh, day yeah. that they, they tell me, you need to go back to the office, I will cry. I don't know. It's going to be <laughs> yeah, very hard. But anyways, 
that's the way it is, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so yeah, and uh, well, that is what is e-learning and there are some pros. So for example, the first one, it says online courses combine interactive games, quizzes, activities, and gamifications to keep employees engaged. So that is one thing that is very, very good. I mean, for example, here in the class, in the English class, we come to practice just to explain a little bit of grammar and try to use it. But the most important is to practice. And then on your own time, you can do the activities, the homeworks, the quizzes there online. So that is very convenient, right? Next one says it gives employees the freedom to learn on the go with a smartphone. I mean, sometimes there are some students that they are driving home and they connect from the cell phone, right? So that is very convenient. Some components of e-learning can be automated, lowering overhead and decreasing the instructions need to be involved in the training constantly. Definitely for teachers, just, well, for me, it's amazing to be here like that. So it's much better. E-learning is scalable. What do you understand on this one, everybody? E-learning is scalable. Uh, and for example, um, if the amount of students that you have in one virtual classroom increase, you can change the platform to cover that amount of students or change the platform to, to cover a, another topics or yeah, with this, the, the lot of platform that the internet offers and the, the program can change and increase their, their needs in that way, uh, e-learning can be scalable, can be increasing constantly. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is true. I mean, it is scalable in many ways. For example, I mean, with the platform, everybody can go and join that one. In this kind of classes online, I mean, there are classes, not English. English is not good to have a lot of people, but there are some other classes that I have attended where there are a hundred people. I mean, to be physically with a hundred people is kind of difficult, right? And it's very expensive. But online, I mean, it's, it's something that is very easy to, to be done. Also remember that, for example, we record the videos. Some companies, they do that one. They provide the training and then they upload the video from the training. So anybody in the company or maybe one person can come, can join to the training, they can see and learn. So that is a very good way for, for this one. So for the physical, it's not possible. Next one is actually learning does not require a physical classroom, which translates to reduce monetary spending. Definitely, right? I mean, companies sometimes they purchase or they pay for tools like Zoom, but it's of course more convenient than a physical classroom. And the next one says employees can easily manage work with learning by taking the online courses at their preferred time. It's another thing. Sorry, it's another thing that is very convenient. I mean, it's very convenient actually. And uh, learning management systems provide enough data to efficiently calculate the return of training investment. So remember that in companies, we can measure everything. And this is one of the KPIs of the L&D teams. Uh, so to, to check if the investment was available and if people have learned. Uh, let's check some words here. Recognize methods, past pandemic. Mm, there are not many. What is gamification? Anybody, what is gamification? Having, huh? having a lot of options to do something. Very good. There are many activities that you can do, right? English is uh, um, something that sometimes provides a lot of dynamics and a lot of things. Sometimes as here in the work for, I mean, the English for work is not that possible, but yeah, I mean, we can do many other things. Let's see, on the go, what is that phrase? On 
on at the, the school. time that you uh, that you are available uh, could be as you mentioned before for example i'm a communion from santana san salvador and i'm just learning on the go while i'm in the bus or, or in the, on the on way the to somewhere mm -hmm. yeah you can connect from anywhere right I mean, at home, if you are working, you can do it there. If you are on the bus, if you, I mean, anywhere. So it's very convenient because you don't have to say, oh, I'm late for the class and I'm going to miss. Uh, it's, it's not like that, it's not like that. Teacher, oh. is not necessary the physical space, no? Exactly. So you can be there lying in your bed, taking the class, so that is good, as long as you don't, is, don't sleep. Is it flexibly the schedule, no? Exactly, there is another thing. There are many options, so you can choose, oh, I want these Saturdays or Sundays or at night, so I rest on Sundays. So there are many, many things. Good, good. Uh, let's see if there is any other word. I don't think so. What is allowing? Letting you do something. Okay when you are able to, when somebody lets you do, or when some tools let you do some things. Okay, the cons, that is going to be for, let's see, Anna Claudia, could you please help me reading this? The cons, um, it takes a lot of time to design training materials and keep them updated. Employees might feel isolated with the lack of face-to-face -face interaction with the instructors. Requires stable access to high-speed internet, internet because employees are using a screen. It's easy to get distracted by other apps or internet sites. No hands-on experience for sharpening practical skills. There are many types of e-learning tools to assist LED teams create, manage, update, and facilitate effective training programs. Here are a few resources to find the right tools for your organization's needs. Good. So those are some cons. What did you understand on the cons? Mm, um, cons are like the kind of tools or material you can look for uh, whenever you are training yourself uh, but sometimes you need to wait for materials to be updated and sometimes you need some type of assistance and you just have those uh, resources like a boot i guess sometimes are cool mm -hmm. when you click on somewhere to, for help and you want to explain in the boot doesn't understand what you want. Ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, very good, interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, there are some cons. Uh, I guess maybe the first one is for teachers. I mean, sometimes, yes, it's difficult to design the material, to think, I mean, what is going to be interesting for everybody. Um, to feel isolated, I believe that depends. That depends on, on the person, right? Uh, what is isolated, my friends? Like be apart, like feeling alone? Feeling alone, yeah. It's like when somebody is there and I mean, he feels that he wants better to go to a physical classroom. Maybe the third one is maybe the most problematic, I guess. Uh, internet problems that we might have. I mean, if you don't have internet or if there is no energy at home or wherever you are, sometimes it's difficult, right? So maybe that is the most common. The other ones, I guess, that are not that that strong, but anyways. Let's see if there is any other. What is a screen? The monitor. Like a monitor, very good. Like on your cell phone or a computer, whenever you see everything right. And what is, it says here, no hands-on experience for sharpening, practical skills. What is sharpening in this sentence? When you don't practice uh, by hand, 
to do something, but just uh, on the screen, and you don't you don't have the the access to to the resources and model some something or doing something just only watching and watching and watching but not practicing very good so in that case you are not able to sharpen your skills right sharpening is like to upgrade to be sure that you understood because as you say actually before sometimes yeah you understand everything but whenever you are going to do many things might be happening and then you you have a lot of questions so sometimes online you are not able to practice in this class it's possible because it's about speaking right so it's totally different but in mind that we are doing excel or we're doing any other kind of workshop i mean you need to practice of course good let's move on Number two says on the job training. So the first part is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Uh, on the job training. On the job training enables active participation for employees by allowing them to learn in the flow of work. It's one of the most effective employee training methods to teach a new software application or process by in an app and on a screen walkthroughs and guides that help users navigate through different features and tasks within an application then go on the job training is faster user adoption of new tools or newly released features. What did you understand on this one? Um, well, uh, this is like learn with practice. Yeah, that is something like that one, right? It's like the Salvadorian yeah. way. So you are hired, yes. that is your desk <laughs> and go and work, right? And you sit down and you ask questions. Hey, do you know how to do this? I mean, you have the experience, of course, but I mean, even if you are very well skilled, there are yeah. things that are different, right? So yeah, that's right. Yeah, that is it. I mean, uh, when you go and learn there in the day, daily basis work. You will learn on the way. Exactly. That is it. So I believe that this is good whenever you have a first part, right? In my opinion. In my opinion, it's good when you have a previous training about some things and you practice about the, the uses of a software or anything like that. And then when you go into the daily flow, then you, you understand a little bit better and you will be able to practice and check some things. But that's my opinion. Good. Yeah, I guess that. Go ahead. Those kind of training maybe could happen with when you saw an advertising that says uh, when is uh, whatever position as soon as it's possible. That is true, yeah. It's very common when you are in the same company, right? And then you move uh -huh. to another position. It's like, come here and sit down and this is what I do. These are the reports and whatever, right? So that is very common. That is very common. Yeah. Good. Let me check if there is any word here. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Walkthroughs. What is walkthroughs? Like guidance? Yeah, it's very similar to a guide, right? That is mm -hmm. step one, you need to do this. Step two is like mm -hmm. something like that. Very good. Features. What is features? Maybe the different characteristics that a product or a software has in order to do everything that you want. Very good, perfect. Those are features, right? So like characteristics of anything, a service, product, whatever. And it says the end goal of the of on the job training is faster user adoption. So Whenever you want somebody to learn very fast, 
that is the way, right? I'm going to train you for a few days for the, I mean, the technical aspects and then go and learn there. So that would be it. Pros, that is going to be for Danny. Okay. Uh, pros. Uh, on the job, uh, the job training, uh, yeah, the, the bullet, right? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. On the job training, on the job training leads to better results as it as it's easier for employees to learn while working on a project themselves. Train training employees on the job saves money, spend on costly off-site training programs. Employees pick up new skills without disrupting their daily routines and productivity. Facilitates personalized uh, training by allowing employees to focus on the skills most relevant to their job. To their job. Okay, please continue. Digital adoption platforms with no code options can be deployed to produce Learn by doing content in multiple in multiple formats quickly and cut the content creation time. What fix interactive on the job e-learning solution arguments do training by helping employees learn uh, by doing within the business application. The what fix digital Ado adoption center of excellence. COEA program is built to personalization. We work with customers to optimize, 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 optimize. training, optimize uh, training time by creating role specific tasks. Very good, perfect. Let's speak about the pros. Uh, what did you understand on the pros? Um, I understand that. Um, by learning in the uh, by training in the in the in the in the site on the job uh, saves money to the company and you don't have to uh, lose time and to to move to other sites the, the employees or uh, get them out uh, to the focus um is very efficient very good perfect actually yes i mean there are four main things but exactly what you're saying it's going to be uh easier faster uh, not that expensive so that's why in el salvador is the most popular way of training <laughs> cons is only one it says can be less productive for employees who prefer face-to-face -face interaction or guidance yeah, sometimes you're kind of lost. Or that depends also, I mean, imagine that you are going to be learning from somebody else's and that person is not that happy that you are there or that person is too busy and they are like, oh my goodness, a person is going to be here with me all day long and it's not that good. So anyways, let's move on to the next one, instructor-led learning. So the first part and the pros is going to be for, let's see, Heidi. Instructor-led training is one of the most traditional and popular types of employee training techniques that mimics physical classroom spaces with an instructor present to lead the training session. This usually occurs using a lecture style presentation with supporting with visual components. Pros. Direct interaction with trainers and other employees prevents social isolation. Questions that arise during the course are brought up and responded to quickly and effectively. An effective method for complex topics that need personal guidance. Good, perfect. So let's talk about the method. What did you understand on that? For example, it's like uh, like the one we're having here, but maybe in presence. Yep. With an instruction that can provide us 
uh, from answers to our our doubts or questions exactly so that is like the most traditional right it's the most common um and uh, it's very popular i mean people some people they actually prefer to go and be there face to face to the person that is going to train you so depending on some on some uh, trainings or, or the things that you are trying to learn of course this is very efficient and uh, yeah this has usually occurs using a lecture style presentation with support and visual components that that is exactly what we're doing here right so we have a presentation when we read and we analyze and we comment we practice so that is it regarding maybe the process of my, maybe because of my age i prefer this kind uh, really yeah. no actually it's, it's very popular i mean it's very good because i mean here in the english class for example i know that it's for you to practice but you need a guidance on what we're going to speak about uh, how is going to be this activity uh, and ask questions i mean actually that is one that is the second one when you have a question you just ask and that's it right i can answer the question immediately so that is a very good thing and also the first one because uh, well some companies that it prefers this because you are not going to feel isolated you are not going to feel like you are not part of the group and for also complex topics yeah this is definitely the best way good what is my friends mimics mm. imitate to imitate, very good. Let's see. I don't believe there is any other. Cons, that is going to be for Ada Cáceres. The cons, trainings cannot move it at their own pace. Rented space travel and catering costs make it not economical. Employees meet Thing in boring and designing age limited day to calculate role, no suitor and remote workers. Okay, so what did you understand on this cons? It's a, uh, for example, in uh, it's a complicated retain space and uh, the people not uh, move it, uh, cannot move it the the. The area, the, the training, um, in the limit of that only. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, actually, the first one is one of the most complex because you you have seen that one in all the classes that we have had here. I guess not everybody is in the same level, right? Some people they speak faster. Some other people they, I mean, and in the in the classes in this kind of classes in the the one with uh, a person that is getting, getting you, I mean, you need to cover the topic. Today, the topic of today is this, and we explain and we, we move on. And that is one of the problems that some people maybe they didn't, didn't understand and they need more time or more practice. So uh, that might be a problem. So that's why I'm always asking you to ask questions. At this level, I guess not, every, I mean, almost you, almost everybody here, you are on the same level, but in the in the beginners or in the intermediate that happens a lot a lot of people they are in different different levels and they some people they want to be slower and some other people they want the class to be faster so that is a little bit complex definitely the second one is about money right it's it's expensive and the third one uh, well, might be boring because you're reading or you're doing some things. As we learned before, there are different methods, different learning styles that everybody might prefer to have in the classes. Limited data of, to calculate the ROI because there are many things that you are not going to be able to calculate. Not suitable for remote workers. I mean, yeah, here we have people from different parts of the country. So that is not possible in this. If it's not online, no questions there. So role playing. The first part is going to be for, let's see, Giselle. Okay, role playing. This technique is when a learner and an instructor both act 
out their roles in potential workplace scenarios. This method is most effective for employees who, whose job roles include direct client or customer interaction, as it gives them some experience in handling difficult situations with customers. The I thin call center training. Uh, the prostitute? Or just uh, a paragraph? No, just the paragraph. Could you please tell me what did you understand on that? Mm. This much, uh, um, I think that, uh, like the para, para, paragraph said, uh, says, uh, for example, um, this method uh, maybe could, could be effective uh, with uh, a person who works in sales, for example, that are constantly in, in interaction with clients. So the experience and uh, in, in, in practice uh, or resolve some difficult situations uh, make them improve the, their, their abilities to, to solve problems, for example. That interaction with not just customers, maybe with another kind of, of, of people, uh, that experience, uh, give the, 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 I don't know, maybe makes the, the, the employee to, to be better. No, I don't know, that experience uh, to, to be face to face with other people that, that are not the same people to, of the company. Yeah, definitely. Actually, depending on what uh, you are learning, mm -hmm. this is going to be very convenient. And uh, role playing, I mean, sometimes we do that here in the English class, right? We're going to speak when we're going to do things. So uh, it's very useful because uh, you adapt real situations to what you're doing. So nice. I don't see any word that is like new. So pros and cons, that is going to be for Maria Alejandra. Hi. Hello. Uh, it's a cons. Uh, uh, pros we, and cons, both. Pros, ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, pros, uh, role playing for. Role playing. Role playing. Role playing for relatable scenarios, boots, employee and guy engagement. Engagement. Engagement and. Encourage learners to utilize problem solving utilize. and critic utilize problem solving and critical thinking skills in the moment. Um, prepares and project for difficult work scenarios, improves customer interaction skills for employees. Cons requires more of an employee's time. Hurting productivity, productivity, mm -hmm. um, so unnecessary for simple is trying forward topics. Not every word is comfortable, comfortable with role, role paying scenarios. This can affect performance. Very good, perfect. So yes, these are like the pros and cons. <clears throat> what did you understand on this one, Mary? Um, role paying is for a rotation or like this. No. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be like, yeah, when you are with another person and, and let's practice, you say, we're going to, you're going to be the customer and I'm going to be the person that is the sales agent, for example. Uh... Oh, that is like role playing. So we're going to act. We are going to pretend that we are in a real situation and I'm going to ask you questions and you are going to answer or I'm going to present you a problem and you are going to try to solve it. So, for example, in some interviews, in a job interview, sometimes they say, what would you do in this kind of situation? Or uh, could you please sell me this pen or uh, this cell phone, anything like that? So that is like role playing. Uh, okay. Um... I think that the green type probes is uh, all the company need to uh, 
have an answer with the different uh, difficult situations or different work or a specific problem where you need more knowledge for solving because you don't have a specific answer for this problem and you need more skills, more um, in, um, improvisar, uh, improvisation improvisation for to your knowledge and you try to uh, uh, practice or to involve with uh, the process try to have a good experience for uh, the clients or that the service you give and with the cons i think that it is very hard because not all the people to prepare for you do or you in the first step to try to attend, attend the clients. I think that is very difficult that depends for the, the employee or person and the abilities for to do this, this type of positions. And, uh -huh. And, and a lot of cases is not uh, comfortable or the nervous or that different situation that you don't do or you don't have an answer for to. I think that is a, when I say that hurting or is a difficult, uh, no. Yeah, I mean, uh, hurting is, it means that, I mean, if you are going to do a role playing, it's going to be with an actual employee, uh, mm -hmm. a new hire with an actual employee, but that employee is not going to be working. So it's going to spend the time with the new hire. So that hurts the productivity. Uh, okay, okay. And only that. Perfect. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, these are like, yeah, very, very clear, right? So for example, yeah. It boosts the employee engagement because whenever you act as in a real situation, whenever you finish and you uh, feel that you are able to manage situations, you are going to be more comfortable in the position. So definitely. And I, the second one, I really like that one because uh, learners, uh, I mean, the people, they utilize problem solving and critical thinking in the moment. Because I mean, in real life, when you are solving a situation, it should be very fast okay and prepare employees for difficult work scenarios that is another thing that is very very important and improves customer interaction skills for employees that is another thing uh the first one is the one that we discussed already about hiring productivity since an actual employee is going to be there unnecessary for simple straightforward topics what is straightforward do you remember Direct. Direct. Right to the point. Yeah. So there are some situations that are very simple, right? You don't need a lot of thinking. So in those kind of situations, not useful. Not everyone is comfortable with role playing scenarios. That is true. Some people they prefer or they are afraid they get nervous, and sometimes they don't lie because of that. But well, in my opinion, it's a very good thing. Okay, so we're going to stop for a while before we move on. And we're going to check the attendance once again. So here we go. Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Presentation. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Presentation. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Presentation. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. 
Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis. Present teacher. Okay. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Present, Mr. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Very good. So let's continue. Uh, good, Fernando. Got you here. Nice. So let's move on. Okay, the next one is coaching. So this one is going to be for, let's see. Marcos. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Well, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay, fine. The coaching method involves an experienced professional, a supervisor, mentor, or better employee to mentor or coaches and employ on a the job. Task and responsibilities. The coaching method can be both in person or virtually, making it ideal for both office and remote work forces. Very good. Uh, continue. I know that's fine. I just I want to ask you what did you understand on this one? Okay, okay. Uh, Uh, that is uh, a style of teaching uh, is about uh, one person who only works with one to one with another person for a specific job and uh, for training in a specific field. And I think this style of teaching is more the uh, zoom up or like a summary Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Actually, that is it. I mean, coaching involves an experienced professional from the company, right? Maybe a supervisor, a mentor, a veteran employee, somebody who knows. And then uh, that person is going to provide the employee, the new employee, some tasks, responsibility, procedures, steps, anything that are involved with the new position. So, and the good thing about this one is that uh, it's, it's possible to be done virtually or in person. So it's going to be very, very good, very easy. So let's check about pros and cons. That is going to be for Ramon. Hello, teacher. Hello. Uh, what paragraph? Uh, please, the pros and the cons. The pros. Okay, creates a relationship between employees that continuous after training is complete. Allows employees to ask questions they may not feel uh, com com comfortable. Comfortable. Asking, comfortable, okay. Asking in a classroom during instructor-led training. Employees learn by watching their mentor do things in real time. Cons uh, require a significant amount of time in investment from the supervisor mentor. The relationship between the mentor and learner is a ma major deciding factor for a successful training session. Limit data to show how social learning work works and calculate role. Good. In your own words, what did you understand on this one? Words, I don't understand. 
no, in your own words, what did you understand? On this oh, okay, okay. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Um, let me see. Um, I think uh, the the mentors are. Um, uh, co, uh, I don't know. Deberían ser. Okay. Uh -huh. um, 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 the mentors make the session uh, um, more participated and, and and allows employees to ask questions and okay. and the cons I think The, it's not really clearly. Sorry, okay, don't worry. <laughs> uh, no worries. I can help you with that one. So, yeah, I mean, the first one is actually very good because the new employee is going to create a link with uh, the old employee. I mean, the 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 training. I mean everything is going to continue after that. So they will be friends and they, I mean, the new employees is going to know who to go in case they have questions. So that is a good thing. And the other one says allows employees to ask questions they may not feel comfortable asking in a classroom. So that is true. I mean, many things. Is the environment here good? How is the bus, for example? Is the bus nice person? Or how is this process that complex? How do you deal with conflicts with other people? There are questions that um, sometimes are not possible to be asked in a classroom. And also they learn by watching the mentor, their real time and their real job. So that is another good thing. About the cons, I mean, the amount of time investment from that one sometimes requires a lot, depending on the complexity of the tasks or the job that is going to be learned. The relation between the mentor and learning is a major deciding factor for a successful training session. That sometimes depends, I mean. So you need to be careful on who is going to be the mentor. I believe that that is the best. And the other one is how to calculate the ROI. That is about the, the return of investment about the, the uh, training. Good, simulation training. This one is going to be for, uh, Francisco, is it possible for you or is not? I guess it's not. I'm sorry? Okay, can you read the first part, the first paragraph? Okay, this okay. Simulation training. Simulation training relies on different scenarios that allow employees to practice many of the actual work of their specific as well, simulation training can be a necessary means for employees working in high risk or high stake fields such as failure or double. Many times, simulation training is required by the state of federal government, called compliance training. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Um, right. The parents say the the importance of the similar training program in work uh, for 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 high risk, for example, guilt or guilt. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, actually, this is a very good thing. And uh, many companies, they have kind of a software that is not the real software. It's like a simulator. Uh, they have like, there's a word for that. One. I just don't remember. There is a word for that where you will be able to, I mean, if you don't do the, the steps correctly, it doesn't matter. So 
you can start all over and it's not going to impact the production, let's say software or uh, tools or anything. So that is a very good thing. And it's very necessary in the high risk or high stakes fields, it's as like pilots, I mean, definitely they have to start with a simulator before they uh, go and take a plane. So that is very good. And I believe it's a, uh, whenever you have the chance, some software in the software field, I guess is very common, these kind of things. Okay. Pros, this is going to be for Steven. Okay. Pros, build skills such a problem, solving and problem solving and critical thinking under pressure. And second one, learning can make decision in a risk-free environment and experience the consequence of different decisions. Three, offering training, participate, uh, participation keeps the learning engaged and focus. <clears throat> Allows learners to improve their skill by learning from their errors. And last one, learners gain a better understanding of the consequence of their actions and the importance of reducing mistakes. Good, on your own words, what did you understand in this one? Mm, maybe could be all the skin or that they think uh, that could help us to, to improve uh, about our mind or our, let me find a word. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it had to be a word that could describe this one, pros. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, let let me see. Mm. Is the possibility to mm, examining or try to to know by myself how can be the way the best way possible to improve my skill or something like that? Something that could help me could do a better uh, work or person about me, something like that. Okay, perfect. That is it. actually, I mean, there are many good things. And well, the first thing it says there is problem solving and critical thinking. I mean, under pressure, right? You don't have to fail, but if you fail, not a problem. But yeah. there are still consequences on the software or in the simulator. The only thing is that it's not for real, right? So. That is very, very good. And also uh, it says that uh, the learners, they can improve their skills by learning from their errors. So that is good. The last time I did this, so I need to do it this other way. I need to change something, right? So it's a very good thing, but let's check about the cons. That is going to be for Roberto Luis. Is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay, let me check then. Let's see. I guess. Fernando, is it possible for you? I guess not. Okay. Then it's going to be Ana Claudia. Okay, let me just zoom in. Okay, cons. Simulation exercise can be expensive. Simulation is not always able to completely recreate real life situations. Learning simulations require regular updates and maintenance based on the changing industry trends. And simulation training may provide a faulty sense of safety for employees downplaying simulation as a result of desensitization. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what did you understand this one on the cons, on your own words? All the programs uh, that are looking for 
uh, simulate the reality or the real task or job, always they are going to be expensive because of the technology they are using. For example, uh, simulated programs for people uh, learning to, to fly or learning to, let's say, drive. Okay. Uh, plane, <laughs> can we say that? It's not the same as when they are in the real cabin, right? Um, also, due to the how the technology change on a daily basis, all the simulation programs must be updated on time. And that also is expensive because it's the maintenance that this may have. And not all the companies uh, can afford all these uh, process and all these updates. Mm -hmm. And also it says here that can cause like a false security, like a comfort zone, thinking that you know how to handle the situation, but in real time, real life, maybe you don't know how to, to solve it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Actually, you explained it very well, and that is true. I mean, Thank you. Everything has a lot of pros and, and cons, definitely. So mm -hmm. it's very expensive. Um, it's impossible to recreate real life situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, it requires updates, maintenance. And definitely, I mean, when you know that you are in a simulator, you, you are comfortable. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a pilot, as you say, uh, they are in a simulator and they know that if they crash, nothing happens, right? So, mm -hmm. but in real life, I mean, that mm. is not possible, of course. That's right. Okay, perfect. Let's check to the other one, group activities. Uh, the first part is going to be for Yvonne. Okay. Group activities. Group activity training techniques allow multiple employees to train at once in an environment that is unique to their business department or team function. This discussion and activities can be instructor-led or facilitated by online prompts, depending on the company requirements and the participating groups. Good, what did you understand on this one? Mm. Um, maybe that there are a lot of techniques uh, of training. It depends about uh, uh, the topic or the skills that you want to uh, improve. And that uh, allow the employees uh, to train as a group, I think, uh, but it depends on um, the environment and uh, the department or the topic that you want to, to improve in all the activities and the training that you choose. Okay. Yeah, actually that is it. I mean, I believe that this is a very good thing whenever companies, they want to change procedures. So to get feedback from employees and try to analyze everything is a very good activity, but also can be done with uh, training. So the senior employees, they can teach the newer or they can exchange best practices. So for this kind of activities is, is ideal. This is ideal for that one. What is uh, prompts? Anybody? Um, I um, link that work with like an alert, but I don't know if the context, context is the correct. Sometimes it's for alerts. So a, a prompt is like a pop-up 
uh, in this situation that you mentioned. And this one is like a software or a, a training that is changing, right? There are prompts that, and that are interactive. So you will be able to, to get into that one. Good. So pros and cons. These are going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Prompts, right? Pros and cons, both, please. Uh, oh, both. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, social factors influence uh, learning that result in greater retention. When training is conducted in groups, it reduces the time investment and cost. Teams give each other input and feedback that increase learning opportunities. And cons. A slow participants cause the entire class to fall behind. It can be challenging to get everyone in one place at the same time. Entire teams will be pulled off work at once. Okay, on your own words, what did you get from this one? Well, like prompts. Yeah, pros and cons. In general, do you believe it's good, it's bad? So what did you get from that? Prompts are, are really correct because when you uh, invest for a couple of, well, when you invest for a, for a team to be training, that's going to be uh, cheap because you only have to pay one section. So, and teams each other important feedback to increase learning opportunities. And also like prompts, when you are in a training, you like in group, you have a maybe other person that is taking the training. And if someone don't understand what uh, they are given like training, maybe that person will explain you in their own words. And cons is like this class because maybe we don't have uh, enough time to participate and uh, yep okay okay so yeah there are of course uh, good things and bad things about that one so yep. it's going to have greater retention in this kind of things and reduces time investment and costs and uh, you can provide feedback that increases learning opportunities of course those are very important the cons, well, slow participant cause entire class to fall behind. That is true. Uh, that it doesn't matter what you do, that is going to happen. Uh, it's challenging to get. Well, that is for physical only. And the last one, and maybe is the one that the companies they think about it. But whenever they do that one, that most likely is going to be on Saturdays, right? Or uh, in uh, the during the weekend. So it's going to be more convenient for some companies. Thank you. Video training. So this is going to be for Juan Miguel. Okay, teacher, video training. Yeah. Video training is one of the most effective employee training methods to engage employees and deliver sophisticated learning experiences at a lower cost than traditional training. Creating training video for employees enables them to dive digest information in an easy to understand format that is easier to retain <clears throat> and that employees are able to go back and watch at any time. Good. What did you understand on this one? Um, about video training, like uh, the, the read says uh, at the end, um, there is a huge uh, advantage uh, over Maybe I think over the the other uh, types of learning because if you don't understand something, you can go back 
and watch it again and go back and watch it again and once and and the the times that you need or that you feel that uh, that are enough to understand it so uh, in my case i i can talk obviously for for myself i am taking a, a course uh, obviously by video training and there are some things that oh, and it's in English, of course. And there are some things that I don't understand. So I have to go back for five seconds or 10 seconds, the time that I, that I, um, that I believe that I don't understand something. So I repeat them uh, until I have uh, understood all the things. So, I am watching the video training and, I, and at the same time, I am doing all the exercises in the video training because it's something about a web a development. So I am watching and I am doing the two things or the two types of learning at the same time. Very good, perfect. That is very interesting. I mean, what you say is something very important because it's one of the advantages of this one. In a video training, you can stop and you can go back and repeat something that you didn't understand. I mean, uh, in real classes or in any other kind of, of uh, learning or, or development uh, of uh, training is not possible. I mean, you can say, could you please repeat? And I can repeat, but if you didn't get it, I mean, uh, but in the video, you can stop the video and return five minutes, eh, I mean, 10 times if you if you want. So it's a very good. Actually, you can uh, get that in slow motion. I mean, there are many things that you can do. Yeah, there are some times that uh, people is talking too, too slowly mm -hmm. or too slow. And I have to put in a 1.5 speed in order to, to, to pay more attention, okay? Because uh, in my case, if people are talking too slow, I am feel so slow too. Um, in, I think in your case, uh, or in our case, uh, this, the, those, the, these lessons are being recorded. So if we, if we think, of, or if I think that there were something that I couldn't understand, in my case, I take I take a note uh, about the time that that the thing I don't understand is. So I ha I go to the video and um, and I refer to this point of the time. Okay. So I, I put the video again, and I try to uh, re-understand what you said or what other uh, people said. Yeah, that is so true. And that is very, very nice, very convenient. I mean, and you can go at your own pace. So amazing. That is very good. Good. Uh, pros, this uh, and cons actually is going to be for Marcos. Both pros and cons. Yeah, please. Okay. Investing in video training is a um, one-time cost spent on video production that can that can then be used until your process are outdated. Videos offer better engagement for your team members, resulting in a higher livelihood of information retention enables employees to learn at times that are convenient to them without hindering their workplace productivity. Videos provide better knowledge retention, employees engagement and learning attention in comparison to basic test document or traditional classroom seminars. Your video hosting Providers give you access to different training metrics 
to try and measure training effectiveness. Cons on video training does not offer the in-person level of human contact. Uh, videos can be time consuming when it comes to updating and information changes. Good. In your own words, what did you get? Uh, okay. Um, for example, um, pros, um, yeah. I have many pros, for example, um, the, the, the videos can be watch uh, any time that the employees need to, to watch it. And, and another important thing is that the platform or the, the hosting provider uh, give the tools to measure the, the retention or the effectiveness that, the, that, the, that videos have, for example, with a, a little quiz or, or any other kind of, of test. To, to track that that knowledge that the employees uh, retain and um, what else mm, yeah that in cons uh, yeah it's not the, the same situation when uh, you have a physical teacher explaining all the topic all the all the information and that human contact is not is not the same and there are some points that needs to be covered and only can be covered in a personal level like this like you say and the second videos can be time consuming and i don't understand so much this time this this point okay videos uh, can be time consuming can you explain please uh definitely that it means that I mean, when you create a video that is a training, let's say for 30 minutes, the video is about any procedure, uh, but then something happened, the, the process changed. So what you need to do is to change either the whole video or to update part of the video. So the new change in the procedure is going to be part of the video. So that is a little bit complex oh, okay. because you have a video already recorded, but now you need to change at least part of the video. So that might be, or create, or create a new one. Or create a whole yeah, yeah, new thing. Uh, yeah, and edit, editing the, a video, it consumes a lot of time. And that is then true. Up, upload it to the any platform too, for example, for you too. It spend some time. That is true. So that's, I believe that that is maybe the biggest problem. The other ones, I mean, it's true, it says that, for example, when you are watching and listening to somebody explaining something, it's, it's, it's easier for you to understand any procedure than when you are reading something, right? So it's uh, very convenient. Yeah. I believe it's a very good thing. And as uh, also we discussed before, you can stop, you can return, you can, you can adapt and you can do the step-by-step. -step. You can watch the video again as many times as you want and uh, you can do it in your own free time. I mean, it's very convenient, absolutely. Good, cross training. Uh, the first part is going to be for Ada Cáceres. The cross training is more with teaching and employees hired to per perform. Perfect. I'm not looking. <laughs> Oh, to okay, perform or do function the skill to perform new job function. This allows your employees to offer support in the time of need. Instead of having two outsource work, employees think cross. The cross God. training benefit beneficial for their personal growth and them it make it they learn new skill or the in the hands they value it within the organization on the street switch to roll that they feel is more alien 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 uh, align. align with their correct current inspiration good so what did you understand on this one uh, for me the cross training is provide the 
motivation, the new change, the better, and the physical condition. And it's more or more important helps the prevent injuries and recoveries the faster. Uh, there is a this campaign uh, did a good uh, complete the training. Okay. The, is the uh, benefit of the organization. But yeah, definitely. That's actually it's very beneficial. You know, this cross training is something that is uh, very nice. Uh, cross training is when somebody from two different departments they teach each other. So you go to accounting and you learn some things that they do and they come to your department so you can teach them. So what happens that if sometime in the future, uh, the accounting department, they need help, they call you. Hey, could you please help us doing this? Oh yeah, I can go there and check. And then you don't need to, the company, they don't need to get outsource work and other people from outside or hire another person. Because sometimes that happens for seasons, right? I mean, is not permanent the need that they have and the other thing is that the employee is going to learn is going to upgrade their skills so they are going to learn from other department and they uh, of course as we discussed before everything that you learned is going to be yours forever so it's a very good thing actually and uh, the pros and the cons that is going to be for Suleyma Ivan. Okay. Pros. Prepares employees to fill a vacant position temporarily in time of need. Equips the current skill set of employees with an, an enhanced set of enhanced. skills. Enhanced set of skills. Teams become more collaborative by helping each other more actively. More ability to promote from within, reducing recruiting cost. Cons. For large organizations, it takes dedicated time, effort, and resources for accomplished cross training. Additional duties can be a serious distraction to most employees. Employees might end up feeling overworked. Okay, very good. Uh, in your own words, what did you get from this? Uh, for me, it's so important because if you make that kind of videos with tutorials, it's easy to other people uh, with uh, temporary positions or new people to follow and now the procedures uh, for the report, for uh, many procedures of the of the, de the department, uh, and it's it's easier, and you don't have to uh, waste time your your time to uh, explain the people all the things that they have to do, and they can watch video once and another and another and another time and it's so useful um but the cons uh i think it's only the time that the person that have to do the video or the tutorial or the training uh they um i don't know how to say it's not a waste is um, uh, invest the time is uh, many times is uh, days to prepare the material, to make the videos, to update the videos sometimes, but uh, it's like, um, it's like necessary to, improve the time of learning the procedure to other people okay yeah actually that is so uh, accurate yes i mean there are good things like uh, uh, well you will be able to prepare employees 
for them to apply to any position that they may want to. And in advance, they can go and learn about that one. So that is actually something that here in Salvador is also very common. And uh, they can use their free time or they can, I mean, try to, to get involved with the new, uh, the other department, let's say. And the good thing is also that the other department, they will see that you are interested in that position and they will be able to analyze if you are going to be a good fit into the the other department in case you want to move on from the department so it's a very good thing of course it's kind of uh, complicated because you are working right you're working and other people is asking why do you do that and why is this this way so it's going to it's going to make you be distracted so you can make some errors in anything that you are creating and also you are going to be overworked so you are going to be like oh my goodness i'm so tired today because i had to do my job and also explain to other person everything about this one but it's a very good thing it's a very very good thing this one. let's see number 10 job shadowing that is also very popular here this one is going to be for heidi Uh, Joe Shadowing, right? Yeah, please. Okay. Joe Shadowing allows employees to follow and observe other professionals working in different job functions to gain insight into their work area. Joe Shadowing is also implemented to allow lesser experienced individuals to work alongside experienced professionals to sharpen their skills from those who have already mastered them. Good. What did so, you get from this? Uh, when you're in shadowing, you are practically watching everything that the expert is doing. So that you will be in the near future be mm -hmm. observed if you if you do it the same way uh, when you were shadowing. Very good. Yeah, that is it. I mean, it's a way for you to to see what every uh, or, or the employees are doing, so you can learn about that one. So, yeah, it's also very popular. Very popular. Uh, there are no words here, I guess. What is lesser, everybody? More or less. Yeah, it's to in decrease something, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. And what is there was another one alongside? My kind of next to? Next to it, yeah. It's something that you are moving towards something with another person next to. Or close to could be too. Close to. Very good. Perfect. Okay, plus this is going to be for Danny. Okay. Growth improves communication across different departments, boosts continuous development and improvement for employees, allows employees to explore different potential career options for themselves. For the person being shadowed, it is, it is an excellent way to share their experience with other colleagues. And it's less time intensive than an energy. First hand information or knowledge provided to the observer builds strong relationship between new hires and tenured employees. Good. You're on words. What did you get from this? Mm, that the benefits of that kind of um, in shadow uh, what kind of, I, I don't remember the, <laughs> the, the name of the course but um, this um, is very efficient um, uh, th that improves like, like it's in, in the in the text site and improves communication and they get better the the development and the person and the, the employees and 
that gives uh, to the employees um, different option for a career. And I don't know, uh, it's very, very good and very efficient because it's con it consumes less time and, and is less harder. <laughs> Actually, that is true. It's, I believe this is very good because uh, the person that is providing the shadowing is going to provide not only uh, like technical skills or explanation about procedures, but also experiences, right? And recommendation to share best practices. So that is a very good thing, definitely. So let's check about the cons that is going to be for Maria Alejandra. Okay, uh, cons. In the beginning, the officers will need to shadow their mentor for a long length of time to fully understand the information before the officers start learning about a specific job. They need to have some initials knowledge of the file field field as well as the workplace behavior required for it mm, there there might not be enough time for in the moment question meaning some important answer maybe maybe lost due to the fast-paced nature of job shadow shadowing what? Good, what did you get from this? Um, maybe the people do feel that observe or, or like this is a, to the content for that, the process when the mentor is to this or apply this activity um need to more a lot of time to try to see all the process for know all the knowledge to do in the, the positions and is very um, um I don't know to um maybe to uh, take a, a more time that to use uh, the others and maybe it's uncomfortable for the other person when need uh, the person to need to say uh, ask a lot of questions to ask for what to do what the reason to do what need to uh, for understand all the process i think okay. very good perfect so yes i believe that the first one and the third ones are like the most important uh, the part the cons i mean because uh, depending on the complexity of the process or position that you are learning sometimes you need a lot of time for for you to fully understand i mean sometimes you have one week two weeks and then you got it or you didn't you have to go and jump into the position right so and the other one the last one yeah i mean when you are doing shadowing and then there is like a, a real process you cannot interrupt that one sometimes you cannot ask questions you can try to remember the questions for whenever you finish the interaction or that person finishes the interaction with some other people that is interacting with so that might cause like a problem. So you try to, if you forget the question, I mean, maybe you will be in a situation where you will say, oh, I wish I could have asked that question. That is it. And this is the last one, case studies. Uh, Ramon, could you please help me with the first part? Yeah, man. Okay. Hello. Um... The last on our employees in training methods list is the, let me see. 
case study training method. With this method, employees are presented with a real or, or fictional complex situation to analyze and use as a refer reference for their solution. While cases vary in complexity, uh, complexity, sorry, and details, training should be given enough and enough data and information to analyze the situation and come up, come up with their solutions. Good. What did you get from this? Mm, case studies. Uh, I think um, have connection with a uh, role play. Yeah, it's very similar, actually, because uh, maybe the main difference is that in this, you are going to be presented with some situations that happen. And then you have to, according to the training that you got, you have to analyze and come with a solution, right? Come with a okay, recommendation, yeah. so something like that. Okay. Good. Let me see. There are no words here. Okay. Pros and cons. That is going to be for Giselle. Pros develops data develops data anal that word teacher analyzes An analyzes thank you that develops data analysis decision making and problem solving skills for employees when employees constantly work on case studies they find it less difficult to handle similar situations in real life increases employees capability of thinking outside the box. The case study method is inexpensive. Cons, it is a labor intensive method of collecting data. Time consuming for employees to analyze the data. Good, what did you get from this? Well, for me, uh, like we were talking all day, the class, I think that this this method is similar to when we were talking about the, the, the practicing or, or, or method that, 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 um, that use the, the, the experience. So when the employees think about these cases that could be like the theory said, uh, that could be uh, cases of the real life or or cases, uh, I forgot the word, um, um, not, not real, real cases. Um, oh my God, I forgot the word that was in the photograph. Fictional. Fiction, yeah, that, that word. Fictional cases. It makes the employees uh, push them to think like this, like the, like the process outside the box, not on the conventional uh, solutions, for example. Push the employees to think uh, if, like that, that the work site outside the box, not in the conventional way. And the cons uh, maybe could be a, a little bit um, tired, maybe, because the employees need to process a lot of information or a lot of data. And when that could be, uh, that could be um, uh, good for the employees, that depends, I think, the, the, the kind uh, the, of employee. Not, not, all are, not, not all the employees think on the same way. And not all the employees have the same um abilities maybe or or sometimes an employee could could may could give a kind of 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 solution that maybe could be more appropriate for the situation but that depends of the of the of the the, the knowledge maybe or the or the data that the uh, the 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 manager or the person that that give the the, the method gave okay. them or provide them. Perfect. Thank you, Giselle. Yeah, actually, it's exactly what it says. And yeah, depending on many situations that might be. It. So this is the very end. 
And let's see the last paragraph. Fernando, could you please help us with this? Okay, teacher. Uh, choosing the best employee training method for your organization. Uh, when it comes to choosing the ideal employee training method, uh, an organization cultures, size, employees' learning preferences, remote or office-based environment, and such of other factors influence the choice heavily. Heavily. We, heavily. We hope that our call, sorry? Collated. Collated, collated okay. We hope that our collated list of different employee training methods give you some clarity and help you choose the ideal method for your company. Depending on your company requirements and learning needs, feel free to, ed to either stick to one particular approach for all employees or opt for more than one for different employee groups. Good, what did you get from this? Oh, uh, well, uh, in the country, in the world, uh, there are many organizations and each uh, are different each to other. So the best method depend on the size, the culture, and the, their uh, activities. And Maybe in, in in one company the best method is job shadowing, but in other is um, I don't know video training. But you can choose uh, between between all these methods, or you can not try try it with different um, each uh, the method that has best result. Very good, perfect, yes, that is it. I mean, it depends on many things. It depends on what you want to achieve. It depends on what you want to do, how many people is going to be in training, the complexity of the topic. You can decide the best method for you to, to deliver the training, right? Or to hire a company to deliver the training. So the question for everybody is, which one do you prefer? Which one is better for you, independently from what is that for? For me, it's a mix because I've been through the shadow wing, which is effectively, but it's better when it's person to person, not just connecting online because had happened that situation to me, but also mix with uh, online trainings. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect, yeah. very good, thank you. Any other opinion? Go ahead. I, I agree with Anna Claudia. I, I, I think that online training is perfect for this time. And maybe all the employees have the, capa the capacity to, to take it. But um, we used to, uh, we used to other methods because before the pandemic, uh, the, the war from from home it was uh, I don't know taboo and the pandemic uh, learned us that it's possible and it's work for all the company so nowadays I, I prefer this this type of, of work and also training Perfect, definitely. Yes, I, I believe that nowadays online is the most popular because you can do it from home, you can choose a schedule. It's very convenient for everybody. Any other opinion? Okay. Well, sometimes... Go ahead, I'm sorry. It, uh, well, sometimes uh, I think that is uh, the, um, the top now but uh, if you try to organize your time because um, sometimes when you have a lot of work you don't con you don't have control about the about the time to just connect uh, at 
night and continue to work. And it, you can use the home office in, um, or you can take such a advantage, meant, como ventaja, yeah. Advantage, yeah. Advantage, but sometimes it's, it's not the best. Uh, okay, I, I hate the traffic, but I miss go to the, to the office and share with my coworkers. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, that depends on many things, right? And that is true. You are very nice at home, but uh, it's, it's better sometimes for you to get together with other people and, and chat not only about work, but uh, about many other things. So sometimes that happens. Yeah. Okay, my friends, this was the class for today. Very good. And uh, of course, we're gonna check the attendance before we finish. So let's see. Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Fernando, for you is the 101 today. Okay, teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present, teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibeth Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Present. Good. Su Leima Ifon Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you today. Tomorrow, we are going to be here on the same channel and at the same time. I hope you have a wonderful night and see you tomorrow. See you. Thank tomorrow. you, everybody. Bye-bye, teacher. Good night, everybody. Good Thank night. you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Hello, how are you? Hi, teacher. Um, I hear a sit still. <laughs> oh my goodness, really. I'm sorry to hear that one. Yeah, you, you know, the, the, the weather is is very, it's raining. So. Yeah, so it's, it's very difficult, right? And yeah. well, today, yesterday and today here was very sunny, but I was reading that another tropical storm is coming. So you need to be careful. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Today, the, the day was sunny, but at 6 p.m., uh, uh, star, star rain, um, um, storm, storm rain. Yeah. Uh, and at 6 p.m., I finished my work. <laughs> so yeah. I had a difficult to, to commute. Yeah. But, yeah, I know. It's, it's, well, that's the way it is, right? I hope you feel better and you don't get sick very soon from that one. So. Okay, okay. Uh, let's speak about the one one. So the first question I want to ask you is, um, how do you feel that you are moving on? Do you feel that you're learning here in the classes? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I, I really feel that I learning in this in this core, uh, the previous the previous module, right? Because uh, I I really need uh, to learn English. Um, uh, okay, I. I I talk about my, my experience, and um, at, at the beginning of the year, from I don't know twenty from the pandemic March uh, two thousand eighteen, I was working from home, so it was 
um, it's easier for me to take the class because I am at home and I can start at a time. But in March of this year, the company decided to uh, come back to the office and I commute to El Congo, to, from, from El Congo to El Salvador every single day. So in the afternoon, it's complicated because I finish my, my, my work at 6 p.m. In two hours, it's not enough to commute from, from there to, to, to my home. And that uh, made complicated that I participate because, uh, you know, I am on the bus because it's, the, it's more comfortable for me uh, commute by bus because the traffic, the, the weather, you know, but um, I will try to stay on it when during my during my trip, and because uh, the other the other problem is the connection. You know, some some areas the connection is unstable, and I lost the connection. But today, for example, I I heard um, almost all the class. Um, maybe I lost the connection ten minutes. But I will try to at least hear. But during the day, I try to take advantage of social media and that uh, options. That uh, that has, there is a, a lot of option for for practice. But you know, it's, the, it's not the same experience to practice with the group or with the person. But I don't know if you have any advice for me. I I would appreciate it. Definitely, yes. Actually, that depends on many things. So, for example, uh, is this, if it's grammar about what you're looking to get, I mean, you can just go and look for a specific exercises online. You can also watch videos. That is going to be very good. And mm -hmm. also, if you want to improve this speech, you can either get an app. There are apps where you will be able to, to practice the English. And uh, some things are very easy. For example, in Google, in the document, you will be able to dictate to the, to the document yes. blank in English, so you will be able to check that one. So, okay. but uh, yeah, I know that is very difficult because of your job, but it's very good that you are doing the effort to, to try your best and learn. Yes, um, I, can, I can make a question for you. Go ahead. What, what do you think about my level? I believe you are very good. I believe that you understand very well, you read very fluent, and uh, probably you need a little bit more practice, but that happens for everybody. I mean, for example, today I was listening when everybody was saying, and they, uh, the most of the people they were making mistakes on plurals, for example, people is. Yes. And there are little things. And maybe the problem is that whenever you are speaking, uh, you don't listen to yourself. So that, that is for everybody in this course. You need to start listening to yourself. What is this? Or maybe as I was telling you, you can dictate. Maybe you can start speaking there in Google about whatever, and then you are going to see what you say and correct yourself. That would be it. But your level is very good. It's very nice. Thank you. So um, if, you have, if you have time in your day, uh, maybe you can send us some exercise in the WhatsApp group for for learning or for or for or for speak. Okay, uh, I will do my best. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult, but I will do my best. Yes, I <laughs> I can imagine you you are you are busy all day along yeah. the day. Yeah, but <laughs> everybody is busy, right? But, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, um, I I know. I I think that I need yes, I need to um, practice practice and practice. And reading, yes. reading is is easy for for the most com compared with the with the speak yeah. and the fluent. That's but, it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for example, I try to I try to learn all I try to learn all the day, and I try to 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 read. And for example, I I say image for, from Facebook. For example, when when I see uh, when I watching. Sorry, I saw I watched. You can uh, say both. I, I was watching, I watched, uh, whatever you want to say is fine. 
okay when i watch an image with a word that i don't understand i say from i say from for for later so i try to understand um, i don't know maybe native phrases or i don't know there is a, a there's a lot of options but sometimes i feel lost because it's a lot of information but yeah, that happens. <laughs> yeah. If if you have a specific exercise for us, it's it's welcome. Okay, perfect. I will do my best. Probably whenever we check grammar, I'm going to try to send some exercise on that. But it will be okay, teacher. Perfect. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Fernando. So, uh, it's a, it was a pleasure speaking with you. I hope you feel better tomorrow, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, teacher. I will try my best. You know. I but, know. Um, if if you you can you can I sorry I I, <laughs> I forget the word but when I when I when I am on the bus to my church I will try to be connect but when I I arrive my home I I change my the device I connect I will connect in the computer and you can know. You can know because I have a, a picture profile. So when I have a picture profile, I am able to participate because I am at home. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and the boss, I am, I am able, but the connection is bad. Yeah, and I know. Noise, you know. <laughs> but for me, it's no problem. But I think that is not comfortable for 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 me. Of course, I understand. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, perfect. So have a good night and see you tomorrow then. Okay, thank you, teacher. Thank you. Bye -bye.